oh, it's big. The music in these movies is big. And so we knew right away, we needed the orchestra. We're going to need everything we can pull out of the arsenal. It, you know, we couldn't really pull any punches on this. You know. Hi, how are you? Great, how are you? Good, thanks for stopping. My pleasure. Uh, this movie is crazy, and the music is what helps make it just as eerie as thanks. it is. So thanks. I'd love to know, like, did you take a lot of inspiration from previous Hellraiser films? Did you kind of just wing it on your own? How'd that go? A little bit of both. Like, there's so much to draw inspiration from with this, right? You've got all the films, you've got... You've got unused music that is famous that wasn't even in the films from the Coil <laughs> stuff. You've got, I sat around listening to the Motorhead song, Hellraiser, that was a cover of an Ozzy Osbourne. I took everything I could mm -hmm. kind of put it into one crazy stew. But at the same time, you know, this guy was really encouraging me to, you know, we hired you, we want you to do you. And so mm -hmm. it was a bit of feeling pulled by the gravity of everything that everyone's done and established and the Christopher Young scores and how iconic all that is and then remembering that I needed to figure out what more me is supposed to sound like and try to bring what David wants me to do in his films and mm -hmm. kind of find our own voice with it all you know yeah so did you watch like the Hellraiser films like before this I mean like before you got the the part the so job? I I grew up I think it was something I had more of a peripheral relationship yeah. to. I was aware of it. I'd probably come across it as a kid. I was probably about nine years old when it came out. That feels very young. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> if I was let to watch it, then someone should speak to my parents. <laughs> so I was, I knew it in the pop culture, you know, I knew where it existed. I knew the space, I knew the characters, but I chose to revisit all of it once I had a firm understanding of our script our story, mm -hmm. so that all of that was there to kind of influence me on how we might tell this story, mm -hmm. instead of going about it the other way around. Yeah. So I didn't walk in there with a lot of preconceived ideas about what it already sounded like. And when I did enter that, it was like, oh, it's big. <laughs> the music in these movies is big. Mm -hmm. And so we knew right away, we needed the orchestra, we're going to need everything we can pull out of the arsenal. It, you know, we couldn't really pull any punches on this. You know. What is it you think about Hellraiser that makes it so iconic and loved? I just, I think that no one had ever, it was very, it was very groundbreaking stuff in 1987, right? To have such visceral, coarse imagery with this beautiful music, with this sweeping, melodic, romantic kind of music. Like, the, the famous resurrection scene in the, in the famous has like a waltz over top of it, and it's like, it's like no one's ever done anything like that. And... I guess that juxtaposition of making the grotesque beautiful and finding a way that the music really brought the fantasy and the magic into that story. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's always lived in a very unique place as a result of that. And I think the music, even in the original, was a big part of what established the identity of those films. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And congratulations again. Thank you. The music is a big part of this, and you've, you've done very well. So Thank congratulations. You so much. Yeah. Thanks for talking today. Of course. Cheers. Thanks. Yeah.